Hello and welcome to the June 20th edition. Day 7 is completed. This is the From the Bench Podcast World Cup Day 7 Recap. I'm your host, Mark Janish. You can listen to any and all previous episodes of the From the Bench Podcast on accessmediaglobal.com or podcast platforms Lipson and Stitcher Radio. Well, uh, as we go forth with the review of day number seven, which is complete, I uh, wanted to let you know just some key things here as we go. I'm going to give you, first of all, tomorrow's schedule. Okay, uh, tomorrow's schedule. Uh, first game of the day out of Group C. Denmark facing Australia. That's the early game in the United States. That'll be on Fox Sports 1. And then out of Group C, uh, again, uh, the, the double header out of Group C, if you will, uh, France and Peru. Now, I had France as a favorite. I also had Morocco as a favorite. And Germany is a favorite, so France won their opening round game 2-1 to one, uh, over Australia. Uh, can they keep it going against Peru? That's a Group C game, 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific time here on the West Coast, the Fox affiliates. And then uh, Lionel Messi. Can Lionel Messi, uh, one of the greatest soccer players in the uh, – Recent history of soccer uh, himself. Can he recover from a 64th minute penalty kick failure uh, to help Argentina uh, progress in the Group D action against Croatia? That will be at 11 a.m. Pacific time on the Fox Network. To today's action. Uh, everything uh, was one to nil uh, in the Group B action. Portugal is one uh, had a one nothing win over Morocco. I'm going to review that game. Each of these games are going to be reviewed for you. In Group A, we had a double header. In Group A, uh, Uruguay uh, won Saudi Arabia, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been eliminated along with Morocco. Uh, Uruguay uh, won today. Uh, Luis Suarez with a, with a goal uh, for Uruguay. There, they won one to nothing. And then Spain on a 54th minute goal by Diego Costa. He has uh, three, by the way, uh, pursuing the golden boot uh, as far as the most prolific and leading goal scorer of the World Cup. Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, has four, and of course Diego Costa has three, and then uh, Luis Suarez has one. I'm um, going to go ahead and review Portugal and Morocco first out of Group B. We're going to go to those numbers and the stats and the report. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, as I said, scored his fourth goal in two World Cup matches as Portugal won one nothing against the Moroccan side that uh, created plenty of chances for themselves. However, they were not successful. That is to say, uh, Morocco played very, very well. They just didn't score, uh, which uh, created problems for them. Uh, some quick match statistics. Uh, Morocco possessed the ball on a percentage basis 54% of the time to 46 for Portugal. There were... Um, <clears throat> Ten shots on goal, uh, ten shots, two on goal for Portugal, 16 shots uh, uh, for Morocco, four on the goal, uh, 23 fouls for the Moroccans, 19 for Portugal, one yellow card each were was uh, issued, no red cards, one offsize each, seven corner kicks for the Moroccan squad, five for Portugal, uh, four saves for the Portuguese, Portuguese squad and one save for the Moroccans. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to review the uh, table stats here in just a moment. But uh, 
basically, Portugal played a 4-4-2, and Morocco played a 4-2-3-1 as far as the lineup goes. And so uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, one more time, uh, started, and he uh, got his fourth goal of the campaign uh, for this year's World Cup. Front runner in the uh, Golden Boot uh, Trophy chase as the most prolific goal scorer for the 2018 World Cup. <clears throat> All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at those standings right now. We're going to look at the table standings from Group A. Uh, we have Russia with two wins and six points. I've described the goal differential is very significant for Russia. Uh, Uruguay has six points. Egypt and Saudi Arabia are going to be eliminated. Uh, in Group B standings, Portugal uh, got themselves even with Spain. Four, four points each is the uh, level even tie with Spain right now at the top of Group B. And then, of course, Iran, which still has an opportunity to go ahead and uh, qualify on their next match. Uh, they're going to go ahead and uh, they have three. Uh, still looking for a result. Once again, the Moroccan squad, not going to be a factor. They are now eliminated with Russia uh, going through and Uruguay uh, out of Group A to the final 16 and knockout round. Uh, in Group C, we have France and Denmark, uh, three points each. They're going to play uh, separately tomorrow. Uh, I indicated those games just a little bit earlier. France and Denmark are tied at the top of Group C with three points each. Australia and Peru have no uh, points at this time. They desperately need wins as they approach tomorrow's uh, second series of Group C matches. In Group D, uh, Croatia playing tomorrow uh, against Argentina, as I mentioned. Croatia leads the group with three points. Iceland and Argentina, based on the failure of Lionel Messi that I mentioned, um, they have one point, and then Nigeria has nothing. So you have Croatia with three, Iceland and Argentina with one as a result of opening match draws in Nigeria with nothing out of Group D. Out of Group E, as in Everett, uh, Serbia has three points, uh, Brazil uh, and Switzerland. We still don't have a report on Niemeyer Jr. He uh, had a little bit of a problem with uh, his leg and his ankle in training yesterday. Hopefully he'll be ready to go during training uh, when training ends in the coming days. So we have Serbia with three, Brazil and Switzerland with one, and Costa Rica, a good team. They just don't have any points at this time. Sweden is at the top of Group F right now uh, based on goal differential. Sweden, Mexico, South Korea, and Germany. Now, uh, the Germans, I would expect to uh, continue to make some progress. I mentioned the other day, I mentioned to a couple of uh, friends of mine as we were discussing the yesterday's matches that South Korea, they really have to fix uh, their defensive back four. Their defensive back four was atrociously terrible uh, during their opening match round. So if they expect to do anything coming out of this group, I wouldn't say this is a group of death, but very, very close for South Korea. So we have Sweden and Mexico with three. South Korea and Germany have no points at this time. Once again, the first tiebreaker you want to look for is goal differential. In Group G, Belgium, number three team ranked by FIFA. Belgium has three. Uh, and then England, Harry, um, uh, Harry Lane has uh, uh, two goals for England. So you have in Group G, Belgium and England holding the top two spots. Tunisia and Panama with no uh, points at this time as group play continues. We have in Group H, surprising Japan and Senegal with three points each. Poland and uh, Colombia 
with nothing so far. So we're going to go back and we're going to uh, look at uh, some of these other scores. Uruguay, who uh, is going to advance out of Group A. Uh, the thing I'll say about Uruguay, Uruguay, uh, they're, they're playing very well based upon the fact that, uh, you know, uh, Edinson uh, Colovani, a uh, partner striker to Luis Suarez. He has not been on his game. He has not. He's had a few opportunities, but what I'd like to see out of Uruguay is his participation. Just get him involved. Give him some touches. Hopefully uh, it will work out for him. Luis Suarez scored today on the 23rd minute. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you some statistics. Uh, they booked their place in the knockout stage with the 1-0 victory over the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at Rostov and Don Stadium in Russia. Uh, time of possession percentage uh, stats, 47% possession for Uruguay, 53% for Saudi Arabia. Um, 13 shots for Uruguay, 4 on goal uh, for them, 8 shots for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, three on goal for them. Thirteen fouls to ten favoring the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. No yellow cards were issued. No red cards were issued. Two offsides for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and one for Uruguay. Uh, there were three saves each for each team. And um, Uruguay uh, had a 4-4-2 alignment. And the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia went with a 4-2-3-1 once again, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia going home along with Morocco uh, based on today's uh, results. So uh, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, and uh, Iran and Spain, uh, this game was just completed. It was the final game of the uh, World Cup day here. We're going to go ahead and go through some stats from Group B. Uh, Spain battled to a 1-0 victory uh, against Iran with a De Diego Costa uh, scored a goal in the 54th minute. And uh, Iran, they had an opportunity uh, that was reversed. They had an opportunity, believe they scored a goal. They believe they scored a goal, but the video-assisted referee came into play uh, denying uh, Iran the tying goal that would have made it one 1-1, uh, you would have had a draw, and Iran had an opportunity to uh, get the tying goal, but what was overruled by the VAR, not controversial necessarily, but definitely uh, one of their players was offside. So um, it was the fifth time in uh, World Cup games so far that the VAR has come into play. So Iran does have an opportunity with three points left. With three points, they do have an opportunity to play uh, for a spot. However, right now, Spain and Portugal leading that charge. Uh, as I gave to you earlier, they have four points each. All right. Um, at this particular point in time, the statistics. Iran uh, was uh, holding the possession. In other words, percentage of possession, which I mention often. Uh, which is one of the first stats that I look at, is Spain held the ball uh, for combined 78%. They had something on the order of 720-plus passes that they attempted from player to player. 78% um, percentage of possession for Spain and 22% for Iran. Seven shots for the Iranians. That's it. Uh, no, uh, none of them on goal. 18 total shots for Spain, five on goal, 14 fouls each, two yellow cards uh, issued for Iran, no red cards issued in this case uh, uh, for either team. Two offsides for Iran, one for uh, Spain. As I said, one of those offsides cost Iran the tying goal. So the Islamic Republic of Iran played a game. What they actually did, if you did not see this game, they actually uh, kind of played conservative, you would say. 
up until about the 52nd minute. And then, of course, Diego Costa that I mentioned earlier scored a goal in the 54th minute. And then Iran had a couple of opportunities which they squandered one uh, goal overruled once again by the VAR, uh, Video Assisted Referee. Four uh, saves for Iran, zero for Spain. Uh, not much going on with uh, De Gea, uh, the goalie for Spain. Uh, he had to have a good game, uh, g given the fact that he gave up three goals, okay, uh, his last game. He had a, gr a good game, but he was not necessarily busy. That would mean to say that Iran did not necessarily uh, get a lot of work going his way, but he did what he had to do in this case to keep uh, <clears throat> his team in the game. And, of course, uh, the result was uh, a Spain win. So Spain and Portugal, top of the group with four points each. Iran uh, trailing by one point with three. So they still have an opportunity, uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran, to qualify for the round of 16. Uh, at this particular point also, uh, another note. For those of you that are uh, wondering why I'm doing a World Cup uh, extensive coverage, well, uh, that was the point that I wanted to do uh, for the next uh three weeks or so, the final games will be July 15th. Why is that important? That's important based upon the fact that accessmediaglobal.com covers uh, multiple sports, uh, and we try to uh, give you as much international flavor as possible. Uh, we're international heavy right now because of the World Cup, but we will be returning to uh, more uh, centered programming uh, regarding Major League American Baseball. And uh, that will be happening probably after July 17th. We're going to discuss um, what's happening in the American League West with the Houston Astros and the uh, suddenly surging Seattle Mariners, uh, despite a loss yesterday, 5-2 to, to, to the New York Yankees. Why do I say that? Um, I'm getting uh, some feedback that... Uh, uh, Folks are wishing that I would go back to uh, normal programming, and that's fine, and we'll do that. But that'll be about around July 17th, July 17th being the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, where uh, some of the greats of the game by fan vote will be having uh, what amounts to an exhibition game at Nationals Park in Washington, D.C., the United States. States National Capital. Okay, so that's going to happen. Also, I'm going to continue to bring you, as they are available, uh, Richard Deutsch, the Richard Deutsch Sports Media Podcast via the auspices of Player FM. Uh, that's a weekly broadcast. Also, Jimmy Traina. Uh, Jimmy Traina has taken over for where Richard Deutsch was at Sports Illustrated with a media podcast. That comes out about uh, Thursday during the week, once a week. Uh, I will be posting those as they are available. I haven't forgotten uh, those particular things. But if you feel that you need uh, your American sports fix, be it football, baseball, minor league baseball, basketball, international sporting news, you can always go to accessmediaglobal.com, click on a couple of the tabs. Now, what we do is this uh, little brief 15, 16, 17-minute uh, podcast. It's running now uh, 19 minutes as I look at the timer on the, uh, uh, <clears throat> on the uh, screen here, 19 minutes. We're going to talk World Cup soccer until July 15th. That's going to end that. It's a worldwide event, similar to the Olympics, only happens every four years. But I wanted to just do uh, a comprehensive, as best I can, uh, recaps and uh, reviews of the games on a daily basis. I also uh, will be posting the Total Soccer podcast later in the day when it's available. So, for right now, um, that's what's going to be happening program-wise at accessmediaglobal.com. We're not driving the soccer fanage away. The soccer aficionados are going to 
uh, continue to be served. But those of those of you that like American sports and like the fact that I've covered a little social media with all those pages that I've mentioned, team support, uh, mentioning the California, the uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the San Diego Padres, the Seattle Mariners, and covering those and bringing you highlights pretty much on a daily basis, except for the last uh, couple weeks or so. Um, we're going to get back to that. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten. Uh, because I'm focused on the World Cup and bringing these podcasts to you as close to real time as possible, I want to give you and the uh, audience worldwide uh, an opportunity. I want to thank for those of you listening in France, Russia, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, the United States and around the world, uh, Kenya checked in and uh, Namibia has checked in recently. I want to thank all those viewers and listeners. I appreciate it. This is a labor of love. This is my own podcast. Uh, I'm an independent uh, broadcaster uh, and have had uh, some semblance of a, a website for the last seven years. And uh, I'm happy you're along. I believe that the growth of sports is going to proliferate in the international community. And if we think about it uh, with some of the things that are going on around the world between uh, uh, nations of Africa, that would be Yemen, the Democratic Republic of Congo, some of the things that are taking place in the United Kingdom socially right now uh, with Brexit, and other things, we need to focus on the love of sports. And if I could be at least for 15 to 20 minutes a day on a podcast like this from the Bench Podcast to be heard on Lipson and Stitcher Radio, if I can be a unifier for a change uh, and nurture the love of sports, that's what I'm here to do. Uh, Nobody pays for this uh, podcast. I pay out of my own pocket. Uh, The website has been developed. Uh, by uh, Gold Social Media of Santa Barbara. Uh, Gabe Pereira has uh, helped me to redesign the uh, platform and redesign the website. But this is all uh, comes out of my pocket. I don't have a staff of 25 people. I, if I did, I'd be able to do a lot more things and do a lot more writing. But for now, this is what we have. So if you'd like to uh, chime in, you can go to the Contact Me page at accessmediaglobal.com. And this is the Day 7 Recap Review of the 2018 World Cup from Russia. I'm your host, Mark Janish. This is the From the Bench Podcast. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, I've mentioned the games that are going to be playing and the networks they will be played on. If you are non-English speaking and you uh, speak Spanish, check your local listings uh, for Telemundo in the United States. Uh, they will be able to bring the games to you in uh, the Spanish language. So for those of you who are taking the time to listen, I uh, totally appreciate everything you've done. Spread the word about accessmediaglobal.com if you enjoy it. I enjoy doing it so far. And, uh, you know, as long as I have the energy and the will and the spirit to do this uh, podcast and go before nations uh, around the world at accessmediaglobal.com, I'm going to do it. For now, I'm Mark Chanish. Day 7 of the World Cup completed. Two teams out of Group A making their way into the final 16. Congratulations to the homestanding Russia squad and the nation of Uruguay. We'll have more tomorrow, so stay tuned at accessmediaglobal.com. For now, I'm Mark Chanish wishing you a happy June 20th, 2018. Have a great day, everyone.